Part of this video is sponsored by Into the AM. Games Workshop just released 25 brand spanking new paints using the brave title A New Era of Paints. And as a paint connoisseur and a contrast paints lover, I truly have to put that statement to the test. <laughs> I'm actually really surprised. This is quite how much of it is true and how much is this marketing? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. And if you want the whole set, you'll have to shell out $195 for 25 paints. That's a lot. And stick around to the end of the video because at the end we're going to show you which paints are definitely worth picking out and which ones might not be. The original Contrast Paints line is one of the most divisive hobby tool releases Games Workshop have done in modern memory. Some people hated them, a lot of people loved them, but I think the main reason why people were dissatisfied was because of how it was marketed. They claimed it would be the perfect one coat tool to make sure that all of your grey would turn into finished painted armies with shadow, midtones and highlight. And we've since then found out that that's not the case. But hey, they have a wonderful way of speeding up your painting and have become probably my go-to tool for having armies getting a high level of painting but doing it at probably half the time it takes with regular acrylics. Even with that, one of my biggest disappointments with the previous contrast paint line, the main thing that I'm missing is brighter, more vibrant colors. Like a bright red, a bright yellow that's better, a super bright green, a better bright blue. But also there is no good desaturated dark green and there's no good orange. And another big gripe is that a lot of colors needed airbrush to unlock its true potential. Intermatic blue and plague bearer flesh, I'm looking at you. But hopefully some of these new colors can amend that. And apparently they have one group of colors they call Warp Fueled and Wonderful and that should fix the problem. So let's get started with this group of paints and smack some of it on some lovely spider goblins. The two colors that I've been most excited about trying is Eldari Emerald and Croxigor Scales. As I'm hoping that they will fill the gap in that turquoise slash teal scale of colors. I found both of these colors really nice. My personal favorite was definitely the Croxigor Scale, but there is something positive with the Eldari Emerald, and that is that it's a single pigment color. And that is something super important. Why? Well, we'll cover that a bit later in the video. Striking Scorpion has a nice coverage and is a good new complement as a highlight for orky skin whenever you want them to be super vibrant. This sort of bright green is sort of missing in the paint line, so I'm hoping with a little bit more testing I will find a great spot for it. Luxian Purple is a nice semi somewhat dark purple, but in all honesty I could not care less. There is very limited use in my opinion for a purple like this. And the Imperial Fist is a really, really well covering yellow, especially on the parts that were completely white undercoated. This is probably their best yellow to date, and that's include the other ones that we're gonna test later in this video. I had super high hopes for the bright blue Frost Heart, as I thought it would be a good replacement for Aethermatic Blue that I think is far too thin. It is however less turquoise and more into the like cold blue scale than the warmer blue scale. It does however cover so much better than Aethermatic Blue, but the tone is not quite what I would want from a bright blue. With that though, I really like the start so far. We already have four hit colors. Let's move on to Rich and Regal. The original reds from the Contrast Paints lines are some of my favorite, but the ball red here, it just slaps. Again, it's a single pigment color. It reminds me a lot after the application of the P3 red ink, but it's a lot more matte. So the tone for me there is just spot on. The new Doomfire Magenta is a little bit too dark for my taste for being a magenta. I would like it to be more vibrant, a little bit less dark. It's more like a burgundy than an actual magenta. Carandras will be a nice darker orc skin tone. Azerman Blue is very... It's, it's just blue. Honestly, I have no idea if that's good or bad. I just 
thought it was meh. Maybe if you just love painting blue armies, it will be good for you. But for me, I honestly can't really see where I'm gonna fit this. The Bad Moon Yellow, very similarly to the Imperial Fist Yellow, delivers a really nice coverage. However, it's a lot colder than the Imperial Fist Yellow. So I guess that's gonna be a little bit depending on what type of yellows you prefer. Me personally, the Imperial Fist Yellow just slapped this one out of the waters. And finally, the orange we've all been waiting for. And the first impression, it's quite nice actually. It did cover really well, especially on the areas that were completely white. Not as much on the areas that were shaded towards a darker gray. And the coverage is really even, so you don't really get that contrast feel that you did with a lot of the older paints, that it's darker where more of the paint have collected, like in the crevices. It probably acted more like a ink, actually, than what we're used to with contrast paints. But we're definitely gonna try out this one more. It seems like I'm gonna have a lot of beautiful minis when I'm done with this. And speaking of beautiful things, have you seen the shirts that I've changed throughout this video so far? This week's sponsor, Into the AM, makes some fantastic graphic t-shirts. And they're a brand that focuses on high quality apparel. And for someone like me that's a little bit taller, I'm 195, that's like six foot four, six foot five. And normally I have problems with the t-shirts not going all the way down. These ones do not have that problem. And now you can take advantage of Into the AM's bundles. If you want these graphic t-shirts that you've seen, you get three for $60. If you want simpler one color ones, you get three of them for $49.95. But it gets even better. If you use the code SQUIDMAR when you follow the link down in the video description, and you get an additional 10% off your entire purchase. So if you want to have some awesome looking t-shirts this summer, just follow the link down below. I use these all the time. They're truly just sweet. Now let's get back to paint testing. Ethereal and Eerie is their third group of paints. And I'm not gonna go super deep on these because I think that the usage for these is much more limited than the other paints. The Gut Ripper Flesh is very similar to Plague Bearer Flesh. It's a little bit less yellow, but it covers just as poorly. Mantis Warrior Green is similar to the greens that we tried previously in this video, but it's a little bit brighter. This one also goes back a little bit towards the side that we had with the previous contrast paints, then it becomes darker in the cracks and crevices. The other three though, they are more like a wash slash glaze. I do not know why they use these in the contrast paints line. It would probably have made more sense to see them in the shade line than in the contrast paints line. Especially this one, Piler Glacier, it pretty much have no coverage whatsoever. I just cannot see what I'm gonna use this for. And I honestly feel like that's an issue that goes through both the old line and the new line. Games Workshop should look at adding some information to the pots, similar to what they've done with the regular paints. They have base colors, edge colors, dry colors, and add that to the pots so people know which type of color they're buying. And the contrast paints should have the same, because a lot of these paints have different properties that can be put into different groups. And for a beginner, I think that would be invaluable. The last group of paints they have is a darker, more grounded set of paints. With the exception of the Iron Jaws yellow, which I don't really know why they added when they had the other yellows, because it feels like a mix between the two. And I'm not sure we needed it. The main difference is it seems to pool a little bit more than the other two yellows. I did like the brown Gash Hags Sewer, or whatever it's called. It just feels like a little bit brighter version of one of my favorite contrast paints, Wildwood. And I think that's gonna be a good thing for leather, for example. And the Storm Fiend is a nice, desaturated, darker blue. And I'm probably gonna have good use for it. It could probably have been just a tad darker in my opinion though. But I do feel like one of the main things that I was missing, a dark, desaturated green, is still missing. Games Workshop. Please, can you make one? So let's bring out some more minis and see how they work together in a practical environment where we paint up miniatures. So I started out by testing the paints the way that I use it the most, through the airbrush. I started by spraying some of the paints that I enjoyed the most on my Trogoth, the Bad Moon Endless Spell, as well as one of the spiders for my Spider Goblin army. And I must say, the new teals and turquoise is a really beautiful color. It does work well both through the brush and the airbrush. The new bright green color, the orange and the yellow, works surprisingly well as well. The Black Legion color is a good color for those who want to block out black stuff quickly, but it's not really a color that I feel that I need, because the Vallejo 
Purple Black is cheaper, you can thin it down so it has the same properties and it does the same thing for like one third of the price. And through the airbrush the orange covers more like a regular acrylic, not like the contrast paints that I'm used to using through the airbrush. It doesn't get that translucent thing where it's darker in the shadows and brighter in the highlights. And I'm not sure that's a negative thing, I just don't really have the purpose for it the same way as I do with like the Green Stuff World Phoenix Orange Ink, which is just one of my favorite oranges to use through the airbrush. And through the brush it covers like a mix between a regular contrast paint and a classic acrylic. And I'm not sure what's different between that one and a lot of the other contrast paints and why it has such a different coverage. But so far it does feel like these colors complement the older colors quite well. Another thing we've noticed throughout these paint tests is that there are more of these colors that don't really seep into the crevices and become darker where there's more paint pooling. And I feel like that can be positive, especially if you're painting miniatures like Space Marines where you have a lot of flatter surfaces. But for things with a lot of textures, say like the Sylvaneth the Tree Revenants, you wouldn't have the same effect as with some of the older contrast paints and the new Army Painter Speed paints. And some of the colors that have this problem, if you will, is Luxium Purple, Striking Scorpion Green, Bad Moon Yellow, Calandras Green, Eldari Emerald, Magma Droth Flame, Croxigore Scale, Imperial Fist, and Ball Red. Again, I think this just strengthens the point where I would like to have some branding on the different pots to show me what paint does what. And seven of these paints are single pigment colors. Bad Moon Yellow, Imperial Fist Yellow, Magma Droth Flame, Ball Red, Doomfire Magenta, Leviathan Purple, Eldari Emerald. And honestly, I think this is super important and a great step in the right direction. We don't really know if that's the case for any of the old paints. And firstly, when you start adding more pigments into paints, they turn more desaturated. And sometimes that can be good, but it's really nice having these super vibrant and bright colors. Because I for one just love poppy and bright armies. And the second one is, if you want to mix colors, you will start mixing even more different pigments with each other, making it more difficult to know what you're actually gonna get. You're mixing maybe three, four different pigments with three, four other different pigments. And they're going to react differently than if you just had two pigments. So with this, you're going to be able to mix more of your own favorite colors. Imagine if we could get like 30 single pigment contrast paints. That would be amazing. And this is another thing you should add to the pots. So from our initial testing, there's a couple of colors that I'm going to add directly to my lineup. And that is Imperial Fist Yellow, Striking Scorpion Green, Eldari Emerald, Storm Fiend, Garshag Sewer, and Croxigore Scale. I think these are fantastic colors that we don't really have in the previous line. But there are some paints that I would skip. Sort of. They still do some things good, but they are a lot more limited in what you can do with them. Pillar of Glacier and Briar Queen Chill are very limited in what you can do with them. I feel like they're far too bright and don't cover nearly enough. And maybe Dreadful Visage is in that category as well. In my opinion, they're just not good enough at what they want to do, and at that price, yeah, I would skip them. Gut Ripper Flesh is another one of those that it's just too close to Plague Bearer Flesh in my opinion. And the black color, even though it's really nice, it covers really well and really makes the miniature look really black. I just don't see why I would use this over a regular acrylic, because it really doesn't have that contrast paint effect. It looks more like a thinned down regular acrylic. And the Vallejo black is again one third of the price. And lastly, the orange. Even though I really enjoyed the tone, how it came out through the airbrush, I've already got acrylic paints that does that at a lower cost and my favorite paint to use through the airbrush is still Green Stuff World Phoenix Orange. So the orange is not bad, I just have other things that does it the same way or better. Massive thanks to all of the patrons who support this channel. Without you guys I would not have a salary so I'm really happy for that. If you want to help out you can follow the link down below and pledge a dollar or two every month and with that you get video updates every month on the projects we have in the pipeline. You also get access to our on Discord with some of the best people on the internet. You guys know who you are. If you can't afford it or don't want to, don't worry, just watching the videos is way enough. But you can smash the like button and subscribe to the channel and that would make me love you just a smidgen more. I think that's it for today. Have a great day and check out the t-shirts from Into the AM. Bye bye.